Uh, re recording in progress. Yes, that's <laughs> that's very good. And now we know that this is uh, recorded. Okay, and thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, training. And uh, I'm glad to glad to give this short training or and presentation to you about EOSC architectures. And here is a short agenda for this uh, presentation. First, some some overview about EOSC architecture principles. We go, we discuss about the main components of the EOSC architecture. And then one important thing is the interoperability in the EOSC. And uh, then, then at the end of this presentation, I have uh, some links to the documents and projects and some, some uh, other materials and so on, and perhaps some con conclusions also. And um, yes, but before that, some words about that, how I am connected with European Open Science Cloud during these years and what is my back background in this area. Uh, I was a member of this EOSC architecture working group, which ascended last year, it works. And uh, um, I'm a member, now currently I'm a member of EGI's uh, team in uh, EGIAs and uh, EOSC Future projects, uh, a little bit further, later, uh, more about these two projects because there is a, some connection to this presentation. Then I'm uh, also work package leader and task leader in some EOSC related projects, which we, you will see also a little bit later why, there, why these projects are important. But uh, I'm working for with uh, this project called uh, AI for Public Policy, Stairway and Litty and uh, so on. So I'm, I'm doing also this kind of basic work, but also then this architecture architecture works. Okay, starting point that, okay, what is the European Open Science Cloud? Perhaps this is uh, familiar to many of you, but uh, if it's not some, some words about that. Um, it's a European Commission initiative originally and developing a federated infrastructure providing its user with the services promoting open science practices. A couple of important things for the architecture is this that uh, this is federated and its uh, uh, meaning is to promote open science practices in its full, full meaning. And there is a three objectives and um, the first one is, is to increase the value of scientific data sets by making them easily available to a large number of researchers across uh, disciplines and borders and reduce the cost of scientific data management while ensuring adequate protection of information personal data according to applicable uh, EU, EU rules. Important things here are this that, okay, this is uh, um, uh, EOSC works across disciplines and there is all disciplines are welcome and there is no borders. And the uh, idea is that, okay, a big number of the researchers can uh, collaborate and use EOSC resources. Uh, EOSC is also known by this phrase as open as possible, as close as necessary, which is connected also to the personal data and sensitive data. An idea is that, okay, um, EOSC data, publications, services, uh, digital objects and other, other assets, they are as open as possible, but then there is a legislation which says that, okay, you can't open everything for everyone because there is a, for example, personal data, medical data, patient data, other way, uh, sensitive data and so on. Then uh, from those documents and, and then EOSC, uh, EOSC um, descriptions, there is a web on fair data and services, I, idea of the web, Web, of, web on fair data and services. And this is a one important principle level thing in the, with the European Open Science Cloud. Uh, idea is to 
idea is to build this kind of uh, overall service and um, and uh, which offers uh, services for science in Europe. And uh, this this will be, as I said, it's a multidisciplinary and there is a, a different way researchers can publish data, publish, find and reuse data tools and services, enabling them to better con conduct their work. And this is a guiding principles for for EOSC also that, okay, there is a, there is, it's not only for data or it's on, not only for publications, but there is a data tools and services and uh, they should be fair. Fair uh, comes from this fair principles, uh, findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And uh, the main idea is uh, to give to researcher tools to make their uh, work better. And uh, this, the, the, this is um, um, idea is that okay, EOSC will improve the situation for his researcher in many ways. And uh, seamless, uh, seamless access to the content, content and services via common AAI. AAI is uh, authentication and authorization infrastructure, which means that uh, as, as easy as possible to have access to different contents where researchers have a right. Access to data from various sources, uh, which is uh, uh, fair and ideally open, and which means that, okay, there is uh, data has organized the, the way which is uh, easy to access. Access to services for like storages, computations, uh, analysis, preservations, and more. Uh, same idea that it's a mo as easy to as, as easy as possible to access these services. Adoption of standards. There is a lot of standards, for example, in the world of the metadata and 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 other parts of the research data or research life. And the idea in the EOSC is that okay, there will be high level adoption of these standards. EOSC is going to build also this kind of help desk and training program and, and then support users to use EOSC services, what we will see in, in very pretty soon. Uh, then a couple of points, uh, because the uh, material of, to this presentation comes from, from few sources. EOSC Future is the EU funded project. Uh, that implement, that implement uh, European, European Open Science Cloud. And this is the project which developed this architectural point of views, which has started in the, for example, in the um, architecture working group of the EOSC. Uh, EGIA ACE is a, it's a flagship project of the EGIA Foundation, and uh, it's a coordinated by uh, foundation. And uh, there is a mission is to empower researchers from all disciplines to collaborate in data and computing, compute intensive research through the free at point, uh, point of view services. These two projects, there is in this presentation, there is material from these two projects. And then I have used also ELSC interoperability framework documentation and uh, former uh, architecture working group uh, materials and um, this uh, SRIA document, uh, Strategic and Innovation Strategy uh, Agenda uh, document. I have a links to this document end of this presentation. Okay, um, any questions so far? If not, then let's go, let's go further there there will be next uh, next uh, short break in the, in the uh, after after few few slides okay uh, some architecture principles and uh, how this has been EOSC has been built uh, first thing uh, is that that um, EOSC is a distributed federation it's a, it builds on existing existing infrastructure and services supported by 
European Commission member states and research communities. And it brings these together in federated systems of systems approach, adding value by aggregating content and enabling services to be used together. So EOSC is a distributed federation by na nature. It means that there is not any central, central point. Uh, central point uh, where, where, where like, like in, in some service, uh, like a Amazon clouds or, or Google clouds or, or or uh, Microsoft Azure and these kind of things. They, of course, they are also distributed in other way, but uh, they have uh, some uh, central points and there is uh, some central services and service, service providing points. But uh, EOS is build, 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 built on existing infrastructure. So it means that, okay, it's using services which already exist and it's not going to build uh, research services on scratch, but combining and combining existing ones as a one kind of combination and one user experience. This means also that it, uh, this kind of systems of system approach, uh, which means that, okay, EOSC itself is a system which handles the different systems coming from, from member states or, or research communities. We see how it comes in the near future in this uh, presentation. Okay. Um, then uh, guiding, some guiding principles from EOSC Future project, which has in, written there. Uh, this EOSC Future uh, core platform, uh, I will explain these term, terms core and exchange in also in very soon. Uh, core platform federates existing and new infrastructures into the system system. Okay. Um, their idea is that uh, EOS future delivers this kind of glue layer that uh, allow for composition of resources across infrastructures by providing these APIs and uh, metadata. APIs are these connecting points when you are integrating two services with each other. And the metadata is normally something what describes the data and it's a structured data set and structured data and you can move in that and then uh, enhance, uh, for example, interoperability and discoverability of the data. Providing interoperability frameworks. Uh, I explained this interoperability, this part a little later, partial. Uh, providing portal capabilities. Uh, EOS, in EOSC, this portal is a, a starting point for many processes and actions. And the, uh, this project also set up the EOSC core and populate the EOSC exchange. I explained these two things in very soon. And EOSC Future, it's, uh, it's doing, creating this technical roadmap. And this is a very important project for the EOSC and its future because it's a project where it's, uh, multiple things are built. Uh, then if you see some EOSC documentation and uh, deliverables, you can see that, okay, there is this kind of term called minimum viable EOSC. And um, for architecture, meaning uh, there is a, it's a connected this uh, agile project, agile project methods and methodologies like minimum viable product, which means that uh, it's a smallest bunch of the product, what you can deliver to the customer, uh, the way it, he or she accept it and uh, in the project. And then you are next round, you are enlarging that and you're improving the property and so on and so on. You are not going to deliver the project as a one big punch, but you are doing the first um, small piece and one property of the whole system and then deliver that one and ask a customer to accept or not accept and then go forward and so on. 
So doing project piece by piece, not in the huge sponsors. That's the basic idea of the minimum viable product. And uh, the, this is the same basic idea behind this minimum viable EOSC term. It means also that it includes two things, EOSC core and EOSC, EOSC exchange. And EOSC core is those services and properties and uh, resources uh, which are needed to build this whole uh, EOSC exchange and EOSC federation in the, in the future. Something which is inevitable for the whole architecture, like AAI, uh, meaning authentication and authorization infrastructures and like that. If you can't access the users to use EOSC services, uh, it's not uh, very use useful uh, construction then. So you have to have this kind of core services. BIDs, uh, per persistent uh, identifiers, they are another uh, other thing like that. And some others, there is a def definitions and we will see the list what, th what these uh, a core properties are. Then comes this exchange federation, and these are federated federated uh, services, and it means that um, this um, this um, exchange there is uh, those added value services also, which researchers are really using. Of course, AAI and PID and other core services are important but uh, no one goes into the portal doing only some access uh, services and so on. They are using publication data software services and these kind of things. And these uh, things are built in, in, in this exchange part. But they need also the all the time these core properties and core services from, from, from ERSC. And uh, this means that well, this are minimum viable EOSC call idea is that all right, there is a, a not idea to create core, whole core at the one punch, but taking the inevitable parts of that and uh, creating all, all the time and develop all the time. Same time, this EOSC exchange and federation and other, and other interoperable services uh, for the EOSC. Not going that way, that first core, then exchange, and then federation. But uh, the idea is to have something to use for researchers on, uh, on every phase of the development uh, of the European Open Science Cloud. That's the my idea of the minimum viable EOSC. And these terms are for architecture. And uh, this development, these terms are pretty important because this is a, this was something that was planned and discussed uh, very long time, very very long, very long way and number of times in in different work groups of the EOSC earlier. Okay, any other questions? There is uh, one questions from 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 Kurt in chat concerning about how is the transition from the EOSC Cup and EOSC future. Uh, if it's okay, I will answer to this question a little bit later because there is a couple of slides about, uh, about these things. And I try to answer to this question then very, very soon. Any other questions so far? If not, let's go. Okay, uh, Claire, have some some question or comment that uh, she thinks that EOSC project fascinating. It is still not clear to to her uh, to what extent data will be stored on EU EOSC server. Um, if yes, uh, would they be dump of national or specific services? or in which format will ask store data? Um, okay, very good questions. Uh, first thing is that this federa federative nature of the EOSC means that EOSC do not have actually their own services. And uh, 
they are storing the data st data in in any any own servers but for example uh, udat udat is the, this kind of uh, e infrastructure uh, which is uh, concentrating to to data services in in multiple way uh, there is a services what you can what you what researchers can have via EOSC and uh, then everything goes this uh, EOSC uh, you that way and there is a possibilities to store in multiple format and and uh, multiple different kind of way there is some different data ser services uh, for for a longer time storing the data or or sharing the data or or, or or publishing the data and so on and so on. It depends a little bit uh, on on use case. What kind of use cases uh, this data storing is including? And um, yeah, this is the something. And EOS, via else it's possible to find those places, and it's EOS, it's a possible to find documentation that okay, what kind of services different service providers are offering for researchers and, and so on okay but a little perhaps a little bit more about also these questions in in next slides okay main components of the eos architecture we will see some some bigger pictures here here is the uh, one picture uh, concerning about uh from the architecture working group and uh, the same is in right now in number of other documents either and uh, here is uh, this kind of reference architecture um picture that okay what uh EOSC will include when it's ready or or when it's uh, in some development phase uh the one important thing and for this kind of uh, one important thing, uh, which is um, which is impo one important thing for any any research any architectures in, in in IT world or or any service any service architectures is that okay? Who are users of the EOSC in this case? And EOSC has defined this, this user issue that the users uh, of the EOSC are researchers, research infrastructures, service providers, service developers, funders, uh, organization, project managers, uh, SMEs, and citizens, and, and so on. This is very wide, and uh, someone might say that it's a little bit fuzzy uh, definition of the users for this kind of service. And uh, well, I'm not saying that uh, this is the way it should be, but uh, well, this is the definition of the user, what you can find from, from the uh, EOS document, documentation. So users, contacting point of the user, users is this uh, demand portal. And uh, this is a part of this uh, EOS core. And there is a few, a few components for this portal, which are the, um, if we look it from the, from the right part of the picture, it's a help desk support services, training, this kind of not so technological, technical services. Then there will be different kind of resource catalogs, catalogs for the data and, uh, and services and other assets. And then information and dissemination that, okay, how, how to get information and, and, and so on. Then uh, the common benefit horizontal services here are those services which are, for example, those store storages or, or computing services or analyzing and so on. This, uh, it means that, okay, when we have these users, we have to have those service or resource providers which means that they have to conduct these uh, basic functions and this portal and this backend uh, structure, some, some portal way, because they have to deliver also the information because it comes from somewhere to the catalogs. And uh, there is our own portal for, 
for, for service providers and it works with the interoperability framework and uh, in technical meaning and then there is uh, also other aspects of that um, and behind EOSC, service, EOSC resource providers who are not uh, who can be different kind of organizations like uh, national national uh, research research service providers in many countries there is a this national ones or or they can be SMEs or they can be bigger uh, bigger IT service providers or other open source or open science operators and groups and, and thematic thematic clusters and IT services and so on. They are creating those generic and thematic services which already exist. And then there is integrations and onboarding services which are supported also by help desk services and so on. If we look a little bit closer, what does it mean? Uh, there is uh, multiple functions. I'm not going to explain all of this because this uh, it might take a little bit too long time. Uh, these important things are, for example, that, okay, this portal layer include the website and discoverability services, ordering, and uh, this open science impact services, which are, again, not so much uh, poor IT services, but they are this kind of open science related things. Uh, and then, of course, support and training services. And um, there is, a, as I said, uh, there is a number of different catalogs or catalogs functionalities. And uh, here is this added value part. This, uh, this is an interesting one. Here is a research data, for example, research data transfer services, research data as a service, BID services, and uh, a digital innovation hub services and procurement and management for that and so on. So this is a construction what comes from the federation again, from those service providers and from the existing services, which are implemented into this EOSC architecture from the, from the bottom of the architecture. Okay, same thing in other words, a little bit. Uh, here is the main two main two main parts are this EOS core, actually, uh, and then this EOS exchange. Uh, this means that the EOS core, what does it include? It includes the rules of participation, security, PID, persistent identifiers, uh, onboarding services meaning that okay how to how to implement some new services to the to the EOSC portals and EOSC architecture there is a knowledge base and procurement services um, in the in this coordination part and the core platform there is those help desk uh, sms and uh, portals and configuration management uh, PID need their own services and cataloging services. This monitoring, accounting, uh, order management, and these kind of services, they are built in the EOSC future project uh, all the time. And same thing is that, okay, this implementation of the, of the user management services and uh, this kind of validation and open science monitoring services, they are part of this core platform. Uh, they are also supported by support activities and an interoperability framework and which have a, their own functionalities and but I, I explain this interoperability framework in very soon. The EOS exchange, uh, there is a horizontal execution layer and uh, it means that these services coming from from a wider community. It means that there is a, a EOSC 07 projects. Then there is existing e infrastructures. Uh, there is uh, those thematic uh, clusters and thematic uh, uh, thematic um, projects and uh, e infrastructures, which creates those services and also this regional 
regional service providers and regional project regional projects i'm coming to these to these also in near very soon there is a these resources how to ask resources are implemented and uh, well there is a data set software publication uh, fair digital objects and so on and they are they are basically uh, the, uh, research, research products and uh, well they are storable and then there is a ask in the ask part there is a services which are which are uh, possible to use for these products and, and assets and, and, and objects. Okay, let's go forward. In the, well, do we have any any other comments or questions? Yes, we have. Richard uh, comment that it has been commented many times by researchers and, and, and colleagues that uh, that uh, else to be not useful or needed for their needs. And uh, can, I, can I comment just a little about how useful ELSC is today and what it will be like in the future? Okay, that's the core question, I think. And uh, well, I, I think that, okay, I can, I can comment on that. Um, um <laughs> this is not so easy easy question well uh, the first point is that that, that oh, oh, okay i agree that uh, it might be so that uh, EOSC, current eosc is not so useful for all for researchers all all of researchers or and so on uh, i do not have any um, statistics of the of the of usage of those current services. I do not have that one, but I can imagine because the EOSC is right now more or less, it's a, this kind of portal and it's a, it, uh, it's a discoverability service which can deliver, deliver different services from other sources to researchers. And if there is not something what researcher need, then it's a, well, it's not so useful for, for this research group and, and so on. Uh, I, I agree that, that there is a this kind of possibility and so on. But um, well, there is only I. I have made multiple years of different kind of services, and there is actually only sustainable way to make this kind of service development, and it's, it is to step by step develop existing infrastructures and these kind of services uh, and taking into account all the time user requirements and user needs and communicate with the user communities that okay we are now creating this kind of architecture called EOSC and asking researchers that okay what do you what do you need or do you have some opinions about that and and then how to go forward with this and what how we can make this EOSC better. And this is a question what we have to ask, uh, ask researchers. And I see that this is the almost only sustainable way to make this kind of development. Of course, we have to do these uh, infrastructural things like these AAIs and uh, this taking into account these uh, legislations and these kind of things, which are not services, but something what we have to have to implement into that. Uh, well, when we can implement into the EOSC more and more services, which are, which are um, bas basically, um, where is a, which are, uh, how can I say? Uh, we, which I'm, I'm, I'm almost said that inspired by research groups, but the, the idea is that okay, more and more this kind of services what what uh, are needed by researchers, and of course there is not re service which is uh, familiar or good for all researchers in in the Europe. Uh, in Europe is and so many researchers and different kind of research communities and groups and so on, and they have a different traditions, needs and requirements. So we can't tackle this question with a one, one, one service or something. But uh, the question is, uh, 
yeah my comment is that okay i hope and the the um, else will be better for researchers and we can make it like that it doesn't come somewhere or something that it's a it's a very important that okay we together create a better risk um gerard uh comments that is service and software quality assurance and fairness assessment be included in in the soft EOSC in interoperability framework layer or where would the compliance activities fit ah very good and specific question uh software quality assurance and fairness they are not uh, they are not in in the in, in interoperability framework layer, if I remember right way, but they are included in the in the in the exchange layer. Or do I remember a wrong way? No. Okay, I have this in in um, interoperability framework slides in the. They are coming very soon and let's have a look what we what i can say that but this is something something which is in the this um um uh, basically in exchange layer if i don't remember right the wrong way but uh, this is a very good and specific questions claire uh comment that i think that it is crucial to make visible in a way and or and other disciplines i speak for humanities Yes, uh, without disciplines visible, it will be really hard to involve humanist scholars in the spirit. Yes, that's a very good comment. And the point is that, uh, for example, in this uh, little bit messy picture that, uh, and it's actually coming from, where is, it's not here, but anyway, point is that um, research communities are visible by, via these thematic resources, thematic projects, and portals into the EOS layer. But yes, you are right. Uh, for this uh, comment that um, I have said earlier that there is no central point of access, um, but from the figure it appears uh, uh, that there is such an access point being portal, uh, unless the arrows in the future are going to resources bottom, show also some direct interaction with other resources. If the latter of the figure doesn't replace very well. Okay, my point actually, I didn't say that there is no access central access point, but point is that there is no this kind of uh, central central service uh, development point. No point in the architecture. Of course, there is a, uh, there is an access point for to the portal and so on, which are so called uh, centralized or they are somewhere. But of course, there is also the situation that authentication can be made with a number of different different ways. Um, okay, Francisca comment that uh, CC prominently in the models my show is the complexity of architecture. How will this complexity be tackled both from the perspective of daily running on services, but also in terms of long-term maintenance? Will specific communities, partners, and assign the work of services? Yes, uh, I agree. And this uh, complexity in these pictures or architectures, um, well, this is something what architectures do and they, it's a it's a some it's a little bit pity that it goes that way but the basic idea is that those services and uh, infrastructures and, and and assets are as easy as possible to use for users and then there is a behind of this there is a different architecture which have to take into account all these interoperability and other things which I explained that soon, so you can see that okay, why there is not a little bit, little bit have to be some kind of background. But the basic idea is that okay, we need architecture to create as easy to 
as as good as possible user experience, as I like to say. And uh, yeah, then there is also those long term maintenance and sustainability services. They are all, all the time needed because the life cycle of the resource data is not uh, any quartals. It's a, it's not the year. It's not the five years. It might be twenty years or 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 longer. So they have to be there. Have to be, and there is sustainability uh, development and uh, and then a different kind of uh, project for that also. And this this um, those time perspectives are very long and and then taking into account. For example, there will be this uh, in the new so-called new EOSC. There is a sustainability action groups and there is a task force for the long-term preservation and so on which thinks that okay how to create data storing in 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 EOSC uh, possible for for a long time and what kind of infrastructures we have and what are those uh legal legal and other perspectives what we have to take into account Okay, and last short comment from Richard before I go forward. I see that time is running also that uh, uh, Richard see this uh, agile approach is to the development is uh, understandable and this minimum viable EOSC. Uh, the very audience EOSC is meant to target to the method can alienate them because the length of the development process. Uh, I am also mindful that member states have similar development tools and services to fill in gaps while EOSC is in development. But I know someday it will be the solution, uh, the easy envisions. Yes, I agree. And uh, yeah, there is a current situation that there is a multiple service providers and architects, pro architects providers which have a similar uh, initiatives and tools, and then there is a uh, uh, European Commission, different kind of pro projects and, and, and initiatives. And this, uh, well, there is a different approaches for these things. And uh, well, it's everyday life to make this uh, whole thing as simple as possible and clarify all these things. Clarifications, we are needed all the time. Yes, thank you. Thank you all those questions and um, I hope that I have uh, give some answers to you also. But now let's look pretty fast this interoperability architecture and uh, well architecture framework. Uh, well definition of the interoperability uh, basically well basically it's uh, this comes from the new new European inter interoperability framework, but mentioned also in the EASC interoperability framework documentation. And it means that uh, organizations have ability to interact towards mutually beneficial goals involving the sharing of information and knowledge between these organizations through the business processes. They support by means of exchange of data between their IT systems. A few important points. First of all, this interoperability is not only the for ICT systems. There is a technological part, but it's not only that. It's a more uh, about exchange of data and more of business processes and those processes that okay, what we are doing in, for example, in the research life and research processes. What what is the meaning of they and how we can support these processes with, with these interoperability functionalities and by sharing and exchanging the data between between uh, organizations and across the organizational borders and so on. Uh, ask, I, uh, European Open Science Cloud interoperability framework, there is a couple of purposes that the one is the gener it's a generic framework uh, which is can which is uh, possible to use by all all the entities participating uh, to EOSC and uh, EOSC interoperability framework does not what is it not 
it does not propose that any specific recommendation on how these recommendations should be actually implemented. So there is not any technical rules that, okay, you have to install this software to do that and that. There is not anything like that, but there is a, in the framework, there is a, some principles that, okay, how, how does it work? Uh, I can, I think that I can skip this a little bit, little faster. Uh, but there is a service provider stacks in nowadays, there is an infrastructure as a service. And then there is this kind of term, term like uh, platform as a service. And there is a different kind of layers like applications. These are something what user, users are using in, in normally. Then there is a data. Data is something what is moving. Middleware is something what we need when we are doing these uh, transactions. Querying and uh, operating systems, they are these kind of um, uh, pretty technical things like virtualization, computing services, storages and networking. These are in the stack, this kind of, uh, how can I say, infrastructure part. And now there is, uh, in the, these terms are different by the level of automation what parts of the stack is, or what parts of the stack are automated. Platforms, there is uh, everything from the bottom to the middleware and only data and applications are manually managed. And infrastructures, there is also manually handled middleware and these queuing services. Fair data, uh, fair digital object and data providers, there is a, uh, additional layers and or additional layer and it's a metadata metadata is needed to to uh, communicate with or communicate uh, my, uh, communicate between applications and data and, and and so on and this has to be noticed that in this fair digital object world every everything have to be machine actionable so machines can have to have to communicate with each other's all. So it's not only for human, human machine interaction. Okay, uh, interoperability framework, there is actually four different layers coming from European interoperability framework. And they are in technical, semantic, semantic uh, organizational and legal interoperability. And uh, I, I show so shortly some problems uh, and some recommendations concerning about all of these layers. But uh, if you would like to look those closer, please uh, check the document, which is very good. And you can find all those, all those things there. But uh, the basic idea is to present that, all right, this is not only for the technical and actually, uh, the bigger issues are somewhere else than, than techniques. Uh, well, problems and needs funded from, from, from technical interoperability layer are, for example, like authentication and authorization, which needs to be perf performed separately for each community and service. This we know from everyday life that, all right, when we have a different services, <coughs> we have to we have to sign on, sign into those services in, in, in different credentials, and we have to remember number of the different passwords and so on. And we are, it, they depends on the community or depends on the service and so on. Uh, this is also data, data security issue, if we analyze a little bit further that one. Um, then there is uh, this kind of things that, all right, uh, research data may be available in multi general purpose formats, but also community based models. And, and there is a hard, hard to align these, uh, these, these data set across the communities. It's very hard to or need a lot of work to combine CSV files and, and then if there is a something something uh, which is uh, where is a model is a very very different and there is also semantic issues and so uh, and the, for example for these these things there is a number of multiple recommendations that 
that we should create the common security and privacy framework, including this authorization authentication infrastructure. And this is something what we are doing in EOSC Future and uh, for the EOSC Core, for example. And uh, easy to understand service level agreements. This is something IT think that, all right, how to combine, how to, what kind of uh, agreements we have to have with those service providers and so on. And then this uh, easy access to data sources is a one thing. And then those data, data set, uh, fine crane, crane, uh, fine crane data set uh, and other, other research objects, they have to be tools to make this uh, connection between these two different kinds of formats and so on uh, easily. And this PID policy, it's actually also very important to for the for reusability, reusability of the of the research data and other digital objects like uh, publications and and so on. Semantic interoperability. It's um, there is also lack of, uh, for example, lack of definitions and terms and common sem semantic artifacts and um, different repositories. And there is a different uh, standards. Uh, there are sometimes poor documented data collections and so on and uh, these kind of things. Of course, recommendations comes comes to against uh, to these problems that okay we should create uh, uh, public available definitions for concepts and metadata and schemes openness is uh, one one solution for 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 number of different kind of challenges what we are facing here and uh, minimum metadata model and crosswalks to ease discover over existing federated research service and metadata, which means that, okay, let's find, let's find the minimum, minimum uh, model, which can fit to as many as possible existing metadata, metadata model, which, which are in use in some different places. Organizational interoperability, this is something which is actually perhaps the most easiest to solve because EOSC is also the own organization and this kind of governance model and so on, there is a standards for this and which helps interoperability, which is uh, facing some issues with, uh, with the organizational traditions and so on. Then the legal opera interoperability, actually this is something where is uh, the most biggest, the biggest number of the uh, different problems and uh, basically they are connected with the copyright and licenses, I IPR issues, GDPR, sensitive data, private law issues and so on. And there is a number of these kind of challenges what have to be solved and of course the recommendation how to how to create the world that which interoperable better way in this this level for example using uh, those those uh, CC0 or, or, or CC by four uh, licenses and making licenses for the metadata visible and these kind of things and of course member states have a different legislation and this creates their own challenges and and, and so on but uh, okay we can't change legislations here. Here come some answers to those uh, COP issues that all right, there is a core services in the left side and exchange services on the right side. And uh, some number of EOSC future is a continuum of the few EOSC projects. And one of them is uh, EOSC COP, which has ended already, ended beginning of this year. Uh, and uh, this is a continuum or combination of these five projects and it's creating the next level and connecting to the uh, next phase of the project like DICE or Nexus or EGIAs and C-scale and so on, but also thematic clusters where, are, for, for example, SS, 
OC, uh, which is uh, this uh, human for humanistic ones, and then there is a uh, Enbri, Life and Escape, and uh, uh, Panos, which is the uh, um, nuclear people, and, and and so on. Then there is a uh, regional clusters and regional projects like EOSC Nordic and and EOSC Pillar and so on, and they are also connecting to the EOSC Future. And EOSC Future is a very big and huge project with, which uh, is responsible for the next next step of the EOSC development. Okay, I'll skip that one. That is the actually same thing what I said. And one most important thing is that the uh, this EOSC Future will set up this EOSC core, where is those rules of participation, coordination, security, coordination, PIDs, onboarding, knowledge-based procurements, and these kind of things. Um, yeah, I skip also that one because we are run, running out of time. And uh, yeah, there is a existing for EOSC portal, there is a requirement how to implement new services into the service. This already exists and this is one use. There is a philosophy and idea also that um, those services what have to be in, in EOSC, they, this, they have to be accessible to users outside its original community. And this is a one thing that normally all of those services which are created by, let's say, one research institute like university, they are meant to be used by their university owned researchers, not everyone. And same phenomenon we can see on the national level and so on. This is something what have to be changed change if these services would like to be as a part of the EOSC. EOSC portals and so on, because they have to be accessible to user, users outside this um, original community and so on. Then there is a technical thing that, okay, documentations have to be sufficient and, and a help chat channels and, and, and so on. But this idea is that, okay, these requirements already exist and there is a possibility to add more and more services to the, to the EOSC catalogs. And there is something like 300 services already so there is a possibilities for researchers but how usable they are we can discuss about that okay uh there is i can skip a number of these there is a as an essential deliverables here is in the slide set is the links to those documents what i have used here and uh, where you can find more information and uh, some comments about this AI task force in the architecture working group, and they, they create a number of architectural um, documentations and deliverables. Same thing with the PID architecture. This has described during this working group, and very good document for the, for this per, for this purpose purpose. Uh, scholarly infrastructures for research software. Uh, this was task force to describe the, how to handle research software in this EOSC context. And um, open source is uh, one important part of this, this, th these discussions that uh, we should support that one. And then strategic research and innovation agenda. This is a, this kind of overall, I can say some kind of, uh, it's not the architecture document, but this kind of overall uh, map to, to create this EOSC and the next version of it. Uh, starting points, portals, catalogs, service providers, and uh, EOSC association is all already exist. Some conclusions that, okay, this is EOSC is the open, federated and distributed architecture for various stakeholders. There is, a, it's not only for, for, um, for some researchers, but number of different stakeholders. Um, this has started layer with this EOS core and exchange and minimum viable EOSC logic. And uh, well, 
we can discuss also the, about this minimum viable, how useful term is it is in in this uh, construction. But anyways, uh, structures are already exist, and uh, basically this ha development happens in thematic clusters, regional clusters, and projects uh, like. Uh, like I ask future EGIAs and so on. But those thematic clusters and thematic projects, they are they have a very important role because the researchers are connecting number of times with these clusters like like Henry or, or SSA SSO or OC and uh, and so on. And this interoperability it has it has an essential role here because the nature of the EOSC is uh, more or less some kind of uh, interoperability layer because it's uh, federated without without this kind of uh, own own core where is all those services are or or own uh, storages or this kind of resources. So interoperability have to be in operational level that when when this works properly. Okay, these were my slides and we are a little bit late, but not hugely. <laughs>